If you're wondering when your Social Security benefits will be paid in February 2024, I have the exact dates those payments are going to hit your bank account, including disability benefits, SSI and SSDI. So let's get right into it. I also want to cover a couple of things. There's good news for food stamps recipients. So if you're on food stamps or you know somebody that is on food stamps, there is a legislation that is going through Congress right now that is going to allow EBT cards to be used at grocery stores to buy hot food. I'm going to give you details on that. President Biden has a plan to reform Social Security that is going to get you more money, increase the amount of cola you're going to get each year and more. So I have full details on that. And a lot of you have been asking whether Social Security benefits are going to be taxed. I'm going to give you what it means for you this tax season, including disability benefits and the tax consequences. And then lastly, if you watch this video to the end, there is a special surprise you don't want to miss. I really mean that you don't want to miss that. So when you get to the end of the video, you see instructions on what to do. So let's jump right into it. So we're in February coming up soon. And here are the Social Security payment dates. As you may know, if you're on Social Security and SSDI, your payments are based on a specific Wednesday of the month depending on when your birthday falls. So if your birthday is between the 1st and the 10th, you're going to get your Social Security benefits on the second Wednesday of the month. If your birthday is between the 11th and the 20th, your Social Security benefits will be paid on the third Wednesday of the month. And if your birthday is between the 21st and the 31st, you are going to get your benefits on the fourth Wednesday of the month. If you're on SSI benefits, your benefits are paid on the 1st of each month unless it's a weekend or a holiday. And... If you live outside the U.S., you receive both Social Security and SSI. Your state pays for your Medicare premium or you applied for Social Security before 1997. Then your benefits are paid on the 3rd of the month unless it's a weekend or a holiday. So here is the Social Security benefit schedule for February. If your birthday is between the 1st and the 10th, you're going to get your benefits on the February the 14th. If your birthday is between the 11th and the 20th, your benefits will be paid on February the 21st. And if your birthday is between the 21st and for February is going to be the 29th because it's a leap year this year, your benefits will be paid on February the 28th. If you're on SSI benefits, you'll get your benefits on time on Thursday, February the 1st. And if you live outside the U.S., you receive both Social Security and SSI if your state pays for your Medicare premium and you file for Social Security before 1997, then your benefits will be paid on Friday, February the 2nd, because February the 3rd is a weekend. It's Saturday. So if you like what you hear so far, please hit the like button so that this video will be shared with more people. And if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. We really appreciate it your support. Now, if you don't receive your Social Security benefits, there are three things that you can do. The first one is, according to the Social Security Administration, you need to wait three business days before you call them because it may be that your benefit is, there's a technology issue with your bank communicating with Social Security. So you want to make sure that that is not the issue with three additional business days. Now, if that money does not come in after three days, then call the Social Security Administration at 1-800-772-1213. Or you can log into the Social Security website. It may be that you have an overpayment. We've done a lot of videos about Social Security overpayment where Social Security benefits has been stopped or cut because of overpayments. Now, or you may have had your benefits canceled because you violated a Social Security rule. So those are some of the reasons why your Social Security benefits will not show up. And you can also visit your local Social Security office to get more details about that. Now, I've been talking about this Hot Food Act. I have an update for you. This is a big change to food stamps. So if you're on food stamps, you know somebody that's on food stamps, you want to get this information and pass it along or forward this video to them because this is a big change. In July 2023, Colorado U.S. Senator Michael Bennett introduced the Hot Foods Act to help low-income, disabled, and elderly SNAP recipients purchase prepared food with their EBT cards. This change will allow all SNAP recipients to use their benefits to purchase cold-prepared food 
heated foods and hot meals. This is a big deal because until recent, until now, currently you cannot use your EBT card to buy hot food. And so this is going to change that. And why is this important and why is this different? Well, it's because it's a bipartisan effort. There are over 100 lawmakers on both sides of the aisle that are pushing for this. If the hot food ads get passed in the 2023 farm bill, which is now going to be the 2024 farm bill, over 41 million SNAP recipients will have access to hot food and prepared foods such as rotisserie chicken with their benefits. There are a lot of sponsors of this legislation. As I said, it's bipartisan. So what I did was I collected some of the thoughts, some of the views that these le legislators have shared about their motivation for sponsoring this legislation. So Representative Grace Ming of New York issued a press release and I took out a few snippets from that that I wanted to share with you. So she said, families throughout America rely on SNAP benefits to make sure that they have enough food for their children, restricting a working mom by only allowing her to buy frozen rotisserie chicken, but not hot preferred one is nonsensical and wrong. And then you have Representative Fitzpatrick also had this to say, millions in the United States rely on SNAP to supplement their purchase of healthy and nutritious food, and those families deserve greater flexibility with how they are able to use their benefits. And then I have two more, one from Representative Gabarino. Right now, a working mom struggling to feed her family is permitted to purchase a cold sandwich for her kids using SNAP benefits, but prohibited from buying soup or rotisserie chicken to ensure they get a hot meal. And this is from Representative Spanberger of Virginia. Right now, working Virginians cannot use their benefits to buy warm chicken or hot prepared soup from a grocery store. This means that a single parent on their way home from work can swing by the store and pick up rotisserie chicken using SNAP dollars. So there are some powerful organizations that are also co-sponsored, like really, really putting their weight behind this bill. So I want to bring you a little bit of excess from them. The first one is the president of the Focus Campaign for Children. This is what they have to say. Children deserve nutritious food without unnecessary stipulations or arbitrary barriers. Allowing SNAP recipients to purchase hot food allow parents who may be working multiple jobs or experiencing housing insecurity to provide hot and nutritious meals for their children need. And then we have Feeding America, which is one of the largest food banks in the country. Feeding America supports the Hot Food Act, which will give people the option to use SNAP benefits to purchase hot and prepared foods. The important change would provide additional flexibility for families and seniors and people with disabilities to choose the food at the grocery store that best meet their dietary needs. And then lastly, this is from the CEO of City Harvest in New York. Regardless of income, all families should be allowed to use their grocery budgets to access the food they need and want in a desirable and usable form. With so many struggling families, with so many families struggling to find time to purchase, to prepare meals or to navigate limited kitchen space, the Hot Food Act will help more of our New York City neighbors put dinner on the table and will make food assistance more equitable. So, why is this such a big deal? Well, until now, or currently, you can only use your EBT card, your SNAP benefits, to buy fruits and vegetables, meat, poultry and fish, dairy products, breads and cereals, other foods such as snacks and non-alcoholic beverages, seeds and plants, which produce food for households to eat. So, as you can see, there's a very limited list of things you can buy with your SNAP benefits, and the prohibited list which includes things that are obvious, you know, beer, wine, liquor, cigarettes, tobacco, vitamins, medicines, and supplements, live animals, except shellfish, which is removed from the water and animals slaughtered prior to being picked up from the store. You cannot use it to buy hot food at the point of sale and non-food items such as pet food. A lot of you have asked that cleaning supplies, hygiene items, cosmetics, etc. So allowing you to use your SNAP benefits to buy Hot food at grocery stores is going to be a game changer for a lot of people. There is another program that some of you may not be around, uh, uh, may not know about, that actually allowed you to use your EBT card to buy food at restaurants, but that program is very limited. It's called the Restaurant Meals Program. It's only in nine states, Arizona, Maryland, New York, 
California, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Illinois, Michigan, and Virginia. Now, this program has been around since the 70s, 1970s. But the catch is that states have to opt in, and it's only limited to three categories of people. It's limited to people over 60 years old, people who have a disability, people who are homeless, and their spouses. So to be able to get access to the Restaurant Meals program, you have to live in one of these nine states, and you have to be part of these three categories of people. So it, it, it beats, I mean, I'm not really sure why a lot of states have not taken advantage of this, but it is not only nine states have, and five of the states just implemented this program within the last five years. So it's a very limited program. It doesn't apply for all SNAP recipients. So that is why the Hot Food Act is such a big deal. So of the more than 42 million SNAP recipients, this is from Senator Bennett, 70% of participants are children, elderly, or people with disabilities. Their abilities to purchase hot food or hot foods for ready for consumption will provide enormous flexibility to those who rely on this government program. Too many individuals and families who struggle to make ends meet miss out on nutritious food they need because they lack access to kitchen or because they have difficulty preparing their own meals. This applies to people with disability, the elderly, so the Hot Food Act will go a long way in closing this gap by allowing SNAP recipients to conveniently purchase hot prepared foods at grocery stores. So as I mentioned, this is part of the farm bill. So in order for this change to be made into the food stamps program, the Hot Food Act needs to be passed in the upcoming fat bill. However, you know, the year has come and gone. Congress is supposed to approve this farm bill every five years but they haven't done it for 2023. The last time it was approved was 2018. It was supposed to be renewed in 2023, and they were trying to include the Hot Food Act as part of this legislation. But it hasn't happened yet. The farm bill has not been part, passed because it's still in negotiation between the House and the Senate. So, as I said, there are over 100 legislators on both sides of the aisle, senators and Congress people that have added their voice to make this happen. And according to U.S. Senator John Boozman, the farm bill is taking longer to approve than in previous years because of challenges created by inflation. In an interview with Arkansas PBS earlier in 2023, U.S. Representative Rick Crawford also said inflation is making it difficult to pass the farm bill. And so the holidays have come and gone, and now they are hoping to get the farm bill passed in 2024 in the first quarter, hopefully. So, what do you think about the Hot Food Act? I want to hear from you because when they put these kinds of legislations out, the more you guys speak up in favor of it, the more chances are that they will listen to your voices. So I want to hear from you. What do you think about the, fam the Hot Food Act? Is this something that will change the way you use your SNAP benefits? Is it going to be helpful to your family? Is it going to be easy for you to get access to hot food? I want to learn from you in the comment section below. So let's move on to President Biden's plan for Social Security. Now, this is a big deal because for a couple of reasons, Social Security as it stands today cannot stay the way it is because there is more money coming out of the trust fund that is going in. So something has to be done. Otherwise, within 10 years, the, the trust fund would, would run out of money and then only a portion of Social Security benefits will be paid. So the president has put forward a plan Republicans in Congress have put forward a plan. The president's plan includes things that I think you guys are going to like in terms of ways to increase your Social Security benefits and also ways to increase COLA. And for those of you receiving minimum Social Security benefits, you want to pay attention because there's a plan here to increase your benefits. So let's jump right into it. The president's plan is going to cost $273 billion over 10 years to implement. So why is this even necessary? Why is this important? Well, Social Security benefits is vital for retirees because 9 out of 10 retirees rely on it. It has lifted millions out of poverty. And as the demographic shift happens where record number of baby boomers are retiring, the trust fund is going to have a $22 trillion shortfall. So now there needs to be something done. Congress has to do something. The president has put forward a plan. And I'm going to walk you through his four-part plan. The first one is to increase payroll taxation on high income earners. The second one is about COLA, to change the way COLA is calculated so that you guys can get more money. 
The third one is to increase the special minimum benefits. So those of you who are getting the bare minimum in social security benefits, this is for you. And then for those of you who are reaching a certain age where you are spending a lot more money on medical bills, this legislation is going to help increase your social security benefit at that age so that if medical bills and medical expenses and prescription drugs are eating into your social security benefit, the plan is to raise your benefits so that you can get a little more money to deal with that. So let's get into the details. So the first part of it is to increase the social security payroll tax on high income earners. So how is this going to work? Well, currently, as you may know, social security is funded by a 12.4% payroll tax that apply to income up to 160,200 in 2023. The president is proposing to create a second tier of income that is taxable that is 400,000 and above. So, if you make $400,000 and above, your first 160,200 is going to be taxed and then above 400,000 is also going to be taxed. So, there's a little gap in between between the 160,200 and then the 400,000 that is what is called the donut hole. And the hope is that over time, because of inflation and adjustment in earnings, that this donut hole will close and then eventually everybody will pay taxes on all income. But in the meantime, previously, it used to be that there were those two tier systems. There was the 160200 and then there was the 400000 and above. Well, Congress got rid of that. And that's part of the problem of why less money is coming into the Social Security system than is going out. So the president is trying to restore that second tier so that more tax money and more tax revenue will come into the, the system. So that's number one. Number two, COLA. This is a big deal because when I did a video and talked about the 2024 COLA increase, a lot of you were not happy for about the 3.2% increase in COLA for 2024. But the reason why COLA is so low and COLA hasn't kept up with inflation, especially inflation that seniors are facing, is because of the way COLA is calculated. Let me explain. Currently, the government, the Social Security Administration, uses a COLA index called the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners and Clerical Workers. So that is the measure that they use. So each year, in the third quarter of a year, they will look at goods and services that affects urban wage earners and clerical workers, food, transportation, housing, you know, utilities, etc., clothing. And then they will compare the prices the third quarter of this year versus the third quarter of the previous year. And if prices have gone up, then they will increase your COLA. They will, they'll make a COLA adjustment to your Social Security benefits. If prices go down, then nothing happens because they cannot adjust your Social Security benefits downward. By law, they cannot do that. If prices stay the same, then nothing happens. The problem is that the cost of living that seniors face, especially medical price increases, you know, prescription drug increases, those are rising or increasing at a faster rate than the CPIW, the Consumer Price Index for Urban Wage Earners. Because a lot of urban wage earners and clerical workers are not the ones that are on social security benefits. So they don't get impacted by the kind of cost that seniors face. So what the president is proposing is to change the way COLA is calculated to use a different index, a brand new index that is going to be called the Consumer Price Index for the Elderly, CPIE, which will track the spending habits of households with individuals 62 and over. So this will make sure that each year when they are calculating COLA, it will look at the goods and services that affect seniors 62 and over and adjust prices based on their reality and not the reality for urban wage earners and clerical workers. The third increase, the third, the third change that the president wants to make is to increase the special minimum benefit. I think this is one of the biggest changes that's coming that's going to benefit the most people. So currently, Social Security provides a special minimum benefit to low-wage earners who have paid into the system. The president seeks to increase the special minimum benefit to 125% of the poverty level. This adjustment will provide a substantial safety net for 
low-income retirees. Additionally, the special minimum benefit will be adjusted annually to account for changes in the federal poverty level. So what does this mean? Well, if you've paid into the Social Security system, you've, you've gotten your 40 credits, you've worked the, the number of years you're supposed to pay into the system, and you're qualified, sometimes when you, you worked and you got low wages, it results in very tiny Social Security benefits. So those who work in low-wage jobs but still paid into the system end up with a very tiny Social Security benefit. So what the Congress did was pass a special minimum benefit so that regardless of how much money you made, if your money, you made very little, but you paid into the system and you got all your credits, that you will get this special minimum, which is supposed to help you at least live a decent life with Social Security. Well, the problem is that that special minimum benefit is still very low. Currently, in 2023, it was $1,033 a month. That is $12,402 and, you know, $12, a year. In 2024, it's going to go up by just $33 to $1,066.50 a month or $12,798 a year. So as you can see, it's very low. So what the president wants to do is to bump it up. Because if you look at each year, the government releases what they call the federal poverty level. It just shows, according to the federal government, what they consider as the fed who is living in poverty, according to the government. Why is this important? This table, this chart, is released every year adjusted for inflation, and it's what is used to qualify people for certain benefits like food stamps, TAMF, cash assistance, Medicaid, etc. So it's a very important table. As you can see, the 100% poverty level, what shows whether you are in poverty or not, is when you make, for 2023, $14,580 a year. So that is the federal government telling you what they consider as poverty. Well, if you look at the special minimum benefit for the Social Security, it's $12,402 in 2023 and $12,798 in 2024. That is about $2,000 less than the federal poverty level. So it means that if you are receiving the special minimum benefit, you are definitely living in poverty. So what the president wants to do is jump you above that and put you... 125% above the poverty level, which means that 25% more than the poverty level. So according to the president's plan, if it's adopted by Congress, somebody receiving the special minimum benefit will get 18225 instead of the 12000 they were receiving. And so what does that mean? How does that compare? Well, for 2024, it will mean that your, your special minimum benefit will jump from $12,798 to $18,225 or $1,518 a month. That is a whopping 47% increase. That is a big, big, big deal and it will affect millions of people who are living below the poverty level because all they receive as income coming in is the special minimum benefit, which doesn't really cut it. So that's great news. And then the fourth part of the president's plan is to raise the primary insurance amount. So the primary insurance amount is basically the baseline Social Security benefits that you receive. It is the base amount of Social Security benefit a person is eligible to receive. The president's proposal is to gradually increase the PIA for aged beneficiaries. What does this mean? Well, at a certain age, Social Security data shows that when you reach the age of 78 and 82, you, you, you have additional costs that get hit, that will hit you specifically prescription drugs and healthcare inflation. So you, your cost of healthcare goes up at this age and your cost of prescription drugs goes up at this age. So what happens is that seniors that are at, within this age group see their social security benefits buying power dwindle because a lot of this is being eaten by these medical costs and prescription drugs. So what the president wants to do is that if you reach this particular age, they will increase your benefits by 5% more. Remember, COLA was 3% this year, 3.2. So this will boost your benefits on top of COLA by 5%. This is a big deal because it means that if you're, if you're facing inflation, if you're facing healthcare inflation at this age, 
and you are spending a lot of your social security benefits on health care, this is going to help you when you get to this particular age where data shows that your health care prescription cost is increased. So this is what the president is proposing. And obviously, you know, there are concerns about this because of it's going to cost a lot of money. But I think it's worth it because a lot of seniors have paid into Social Security and Social Security needs to work for them. So shifting the CPI so that cost of living adjustment will increase, making sure that more money is coming in by taxing people 400000 or over, by increasing the special minimum benefit so that those living below poverty with Social Security will get more money, and also increasing the PIA amount for people between 78 and 82 is going to do a big, big deal for these beneficiaries. So that is the president's plan. And then finally, I want to talk about Social Security and taxes. Are Social Security benefits taxable? Are your benefits going to tax? How does the Social Security taxes work for beneficiaries, including disability benefits? I want to talk to you about that because tax season is approaching and you need to get the information so that you're ready. So there is a Social Security form called SSA 1099. This form is sent by the Social Security Administration and details the benefits that you received in the previous year. So it would detail the benefit you received in 2023. It is crucial for tax filing. So before you file your taxes, you need to receive this because you got 8.7% COLA last year. So that will be reflected in your 1099, your SSA 1099. For non-citizen outside the U.S., you know, the SSA will send you, the Social Security Administration will send you SSA form 1042S. So that's the form you're going to get. They're going to mail that to you. And note that Supplemental Security Income SSI beneficiaries do not receive this statement. Now, when it comes to tax filing, the SSA form 1099 will help you determine if your benefits are taxable. So before you even decide, and this changes every year, depending on how much money you received and depending on what your COLA was. So if Social Security benefits are your sole source of income, that is all you receive, you may not need to file a tax return. However, if you have additional sources of income, this form will help you determine your taxability, like the taxability of your Social Security benefits. Now, as I mentioned, these forms are mailed or available through the Social Security website in January. So you can go there now. If you have a My Social Security account, then you can log in. If you don't know what a My Social Security account is, we did a video about this. So you can see that in our video library that will walk you through how to set up My Social Security account. Or if you lost it, if you got your, if you received your Social Security SSA 1099, but you misplaced it or you did not get it at all, you can request a replacement online. You can log in or create an account, you know, if you're a U.S. resident or if you live abroad, you can contact the federal benefits unit of your U.S. embassy that will help you get that form replaced. Now, for SSI recipients, these forms are mailed or available through the Social Security website. If you lose or if you, you lose it, then you want to make sure that you go and, 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 and get that information. I think that repeated the previous slide. So let's get it to SSI. Um, to find out if the amount of SSI or Social Security benefit received in 2023, if you really want to know how much benefits you got, check your SSA letter mailed to you in January 2024. If you only receive SSI and need assistance, Contact the Social Security Administration directly as these payments are not taxed and hence not included in the 1099 program. So, now, time for the special announcement. So, if you watch the video, if you made it this far, well, there's a special reward. So, basically, we want to start every time we do these Social Security videos, we're going to start announcing special rewards in some of the videos. And so, you have to watch till the end to be able to get drawn into the special drawing. So for today, we're giving away a $25 Walmart gift card to one lucky winner. And all you have to do to enter is comment on this video and say that I watched to the end. That's all you have to say. And then we'll put everybody that commented in a draw and then we will announce the winner in the comments and let you know who won the $25 Walmart gift card. So if you, if you liked what you heard today, 
I want you to hit the like button so that a lot of people will be able to see this video and it will be shown to more people. If you are new to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. We love, we love, love your support and your feedback. And enter the draw. You made it this far. So just type in, I watched to the end, and we'll put you in the draw for the one lucky winner. So that's all we have today. Until I see you in the next video, thank you for watching.